Hello people, in this video, let us look at what fistula test is. See, fistula is an abnormal connection between organs. What is fistula guys? It is an abnormal connection between organs. So, let us say you have, uh, you can have a fistula, you have heard of anal fistula, fistula, right? Like if this is the anus, there can be a fistula, right? Like this, this may be this, this is the skin, let's say, and this is the anal canal. There can be a fistula between these two and pus coming out of this, right? So, this is a fistula. There can be a lot of fistulas. Here, we are talking only about the ear, okay? So, here we will be talking about the ear, fistula in the ear. And this test, fistula test is to check the ear, okay? So, did you understand this much, guys? What are we looking at today? Today, we are looking at fistula test, okay? Basically, this is a test for, this fistula test comes where? It is an assessment of vestibular functions. Like if you know in the ear, in the ear, what and all are the uh, functions of ear? All that. Cochlear, hearing, right? So, there are two functions. There are vestibular functions and cochlear functions. There is vestibular function. What are the vestibular functions? And in the fistula test, we are checking the vestibular functions, right? So, basically, vestibule, uh, the functions of the vestibule are motion, position of the head, spatial orientation, balance, okay? Uh, and it will stabilize our head and body during movement. It maintains posture. So, who do you think is helping this? So, she must be having a very good vestibular function, right? So, you have understood what vestibule is. Now, to assess the vestibular functions, there are a lot of tests. Like you have clinical tests like nystagmus, spontaneous nystagmus test, fistula test, Romberg test, gait, past pointing and falling Dick's hair pike maneuver, positional test, test of cerebellar dysfunction. So many tests are there, clinical tests. In that we are looking at what today? Today we are only concerned with fistula test. Now there are other tests also, lab tests for vestibular function. You have caloric test, electronystagmography. Then you have optokinetic, optokinetic test, rotation test, galvanic test, posturography. Posturography, Vestibular Evoked Myogenic Potentials, VEMP. Okay, so hope you have understood the names of so many tests. But what you need to focus on today, guys, today you need to focus only on one thing. Fistular test for vestibular functions. So basically, this is a clinical test for vestibular functions. Okay, so guys, this is the part of the ear we are trying to test. So what is this? This is the labyrinth. And here you have the vestibule, right, inside the labyrinth, okay. So, this much you have understood, right, guys? So, let's move on. So, what are we looking at today? Fistula test, right? So, basically, what are we trying to assess here? The functions of the vestibule. So, you know the <coughs> functions of the vestibule, okay. So, fistula test, guys. So, basically, you will check for uh, what and all in fistula check. You will check if there is a labyrinthine fistula. You can check if there is a perilymphatic fistula, right? You can check all this. So, what types of fistula you are checking? Labyrinthine fistula, perilymphatic fistula, you can check for all these, okay? So, basically, how it is done? Let us see how it is done, okay? So, basically, what you see here, guys, this is a, this is the tragus, right? The tragus, it can be pressed and released to produce external, uh, you to produce pressure changes in the external canal. So, to produce pressure changes in the external uh, canal, you can use either, you just, you know, you can apply pressure on the tragus, intermittent pressure on the tragus you can apply or you can use a Siegel's speculum. So, this is the Siegel's speculum. <coughs> so, guys, so how can you apply pressure? Intermittently, you can apply pressure on the tragus or you can use the seagull speculum, which they are using in this photo, if you see. They are using the seagull speculum, right? Some kind of a pump here. So, basically, the seagull's pneumatic speculum, it is uh, used in uh, fistula test, right? It has a lot of other uses, guys. If you want, you can look at them. Now, basically, in a normal person, the fistula test is negative. Okay, read this sentence here. 
the pressure changes in external auditory canal cannot be transmitted to the labyrinth okay so basically this is in a normal person the pressure changes in external auditory canal cannot be transmitted to the labyrinth so where is the external auditory canal so what they are saying is this is the external auditory canal right so if there are any pressure changes that you create here you cannot transmit it to the labyrinth okay this is in a normal person you cannot transmit the pressure from the external auditory canal to the labyrinth this is normal so basically what were you trying to test so let us see if it is positive what happens if it is positive the pressure gets transmitted to the labyrinth right and because this pressure is transmitted to the labyrinth there will be nystagmus and vertigo right so what is nystagmus what is vertigo so vertigo is where the world around seems to be revolving seems to be moving right so basically if the there is a fistula if there is a fistula if there is a labyrinthine fistula okay what can happen so if there is a labyrinthine fistula the pressure from the external <clears throat> auditory canal is going to reach the labyrinth right and what will happen to the patient the patient is going to experience nystagmus and vertigo vertigo is given by this photo look at this photo vertigo is given by this photo right and nystagmus look at this okay rapid what is it rapid involuntary movement of the eyes okay so that will be nystagmus so when is when do you see all this when it is positive that means there is a fistula okay so guys as you have understood here the pressure from the external auditory canal is reaching the labyrinth right so definitely uh, there is some uh, uh, side effects some effects like vertigo and nystagmus right so this is because of the fistula this fistula is present that much you are sure now if fistula is present what does it mean it means to say that the labyrinth is still working that could be a good thing also right so you have understood that okay then false positive let's look at false positive this false positive um, fistula test when will it occur in congenital uh, syphilis it can occur and in many years disease it can occur okay so basically we are looking at false positive now so basically if there is congenital syphilis or many years disease so then there can be false positive in congenital syphilis actually what happens the stapes foot plate is hypermobile stapes foot plate that is the foot plate of the stapes is hypermobile okay so you can see some uh, extra effects like vertigo and nystagmus so what happens in many years disease let us look at this so in many years disease guys what happens the fibrous bands connecting the utricular macula to the stapes foot plate so what happens the stapes how is the stapes something like this the stapes foot plate oval window stapes foot plate right so fibrous band connecting utricular macula to the stapes foot plate so movement of the stapes result in stimulation of the utricular macula so all these will cause the positive false positive in the fistula test so there is no fistula but there are positive results right look at this this is the stapes right and this is the oval window and you can see the stapes beyond it in the inner ear what will be there look at this diagram here so here you have the macula utricul and macula okay this is the inner ear so is it clear guys so what did you see so in meniere's disease so there are fibrous band which connect the utricular macula to the stapes foot plate movement of the stapes results in the stimulation of utricular macula so there's no fistula here right but still you will get a positive now look at the false negatives first of all just recall here one thing that if there is a positive and there's a fistula you can at least be sure that okay there is if there is a fistula you're sure that there is a fistula that means at least the labyrinth is still functional now what will happen if labyrinth is not at all function functioning that means there is a fistula but still you are getting negative because the labyrinth itself is dead okay so you will get a negative but actually there is problem here the labyrinth itself is dead okay a false negative fistula false negative fistula can happen if there is a there is a fistula but it is telling you there is no fistula because there is a cholesteatoma 
which covers the site of the fistula. So, the, the site of the fistula, wherever that fistula is there, it is getting covered by this cholesteatoma, okay. And it does not allow the pressure changes for it to be transmitted from the external auditory canal to the labyrinth, okay. So, hope you have understood fistula test. What else is left here? Let us see what else is left. So, basically, a positive fistula test is present in following condition. This is also going to give a positive fistula test. When you have created, surgically you yourself have created a opening, right? So, you will get a positive fistula test. Surgical, one second. So, fenestration operation surgically created window in the horizontal canal. Okay, so that time also we will get a positive. So guys, this Henny Burt sign, what is Henny Burt's sign guys? A false positive fistula test. They are calling this as Henny Burt's sign. Okay, so it can happen in two clay cases in congenital syphilis and Meniere's disease. Okay, then what else is there to cover? So basically, when pressure is increased, what happens? And when pressure is decreased, what happens? So let us look at that. So when pressure is increased in the external canal, ampulopetal flow of endolymph or displacement of cupula results in nystagmus of the same side. So there is nystagmus of the same side, right? If the pressure is increased, if pressure is decreased, then what happens? Ampulofugal displacement of the cupula or endolymph occurs and there will be nystagmus on the opposite side. So, the quick component of induced nystagmus would be directed to the opposite side. Okay. So, is this clear guys? What will happen if you increase the pressure? What will happen if you decrease the pressure? So, in this video we have looked at fistula test. Basically, it is to check what? It is to check the functions of the vestibule, right? It's a clinical test and uh, basically here you can know whether the, uh, to check for labyrinthine fistula, to check for perilymphatic fistula and basically uh, how will you do it? You will put pressure, intermittent pressure on the trigus or you can use a Siegel's speculum for changing the pressure. So basically this is about Siegel's pneumatic speculum. Now when will the test be negative? In normal people the test is negative and even if the labyrinth is dead it can give a negative. A false negative, you will see if there is a cholesteatoma which covers the fistula itself. Now, moving on to a positive test. Positive test, basically, how will you say it is positive? There will be nystagmus and vertigo when you do pressure change, right? Um, there will be nystagmus and vertigo. So, that will be a positive test. So, basically, where will you see it if there is a fistula? Now, in a fenestration operation also, when surgically created window in the horizontal canal is there, then also you will get a fistula test positive. Now, when will you get a false positive fistula test or a Henny Burt's sign? That you will see in congenital syphilis and in Meniere's disease. Okay. What else? So, what will happen if you increase the pressure? What will happen if you decrease the pressure? So, that is all about fistula test. That's all for now, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.